Thank you so much. I really appreciate the invitation and the opportunity to be with you this morning. Um, so a special thank you to the New Jersey Council for the Humanities, the Plainfield Public Library, and the Drake House Museum for this invitation. So again, my name is Karen Gaffney, and I'm an English professor at Raritan Valley Community College and author of Dismantling the Racism Machine that came out a couple of years ago. And the um, kinds of ideas that I'll be talking about today come from that book. And then there's also some more recent, um, uh, I've tried to update some of these issues um, to, to bring us to the, the present. So without further ado, we're going to get started. And I will just mention that um, if you uh, want to ask a question, um, the Q&A feature is a great place to do that rather than the chat, um, as was mentioned earlier. And I'm not going to stop along the way to answer questions. Instead, what I'd rather do is share the presentation. And then at the end is a great chance to um, both ask questions, but also participate in some discussion. I think it would be great to hear what people are thinking about these issues. Okay, so let's begin with just a very, very big picture um, understanding of the census. So the census began in 1790, and it's been conducted every 10 years since then. And something that does not get a lot of attention, but is extremely important, is that until 1960, people did not fill out their own census form. Instead, a census worker came to your door, and they were called enumerators, and they would come to your door and ask you the questions out loud and fill it out on your behalf. All right, so that's important to keep in mind. It's only starting in 1960 that um, individuals were actually able to fill out the form themselves. Something else that I want you to keep in mind that doesn't always get a lot of attention is that every single census we've ever had, and again, they began in 1790, so this goes back all the way to then, every single census we've had has had a question about a person's race. So I just want you to keep um, to keep that in mind. Okay, so a lot of people that I come across um, think of the census as, as boring or as just sort of a bunch of questions that are just collecting data about population and it doesn't really have that much meaning or significance. And I would like to um, pose a different way of thinking about that. Um, I would like to, to pose the idea that the census is not a neutral set of questions. It is anything but that. And instead, what I think is a helpful way to, um, to think about the census is that it is um, what I consider a decade by decade window into the social construction of race in the US. So at any moment, every 10 years, we can look at the census and start to get an understanding of how society at that moment in time was thinking about race and constructing race. And so ultimately, when we look at the history of the census, unfortunately, we will see many, many examples where the census is actually upholding white supremacy. And there are two ways that that happened. One was in the actual language of the questions and also the instructions. So I mentioned before that uh, census workers would come to your door and fill out the census on your behalf. Well, the census actually gave those workers a lot of instructions, okay? Those instructions were not necessarily shared with the person um, who was at the, you know, uh, who, is, who it was being filled out about, but these instructions are really important for the census worker. And the language of those instructions um, is something we need to pay attention to. So there's that aspect of the census. And then another aspect of the census that upholds white supremacy has been how have census results been used to support policies, American policies of white supremacy. So I would like to share with you a few brief historical examples. And as we do that, I'm gonna share with you four different historical moments. And as I do that, I want you to think about 
how can acknowledging this history help us determine what to do about the census and its race question in the future? All right. So we're gonna start in 1840. And what I'm sharing with you, I learned from Kenneth Pruitt's book called What is Your Race? Kenneth Pruitt was the um, director of the Census Bureau uh, in the late 90s. And he wrote this uh, excellent book, What is Your Race? The subtitle is The Census and Our Flawed Efforts to Classify Americans. If you are um, really interested in the census, that book is really helpful. Okay, so he talks about how in 1840, the census had a brand new category for labeling people. And the language that they used was, quote, insane and idiots. All right. And it might seem kind of silly or ridiculous, but unfortunately, this actually had very devastating consequences. So again, keep in mind, we're in 1840. And pro-slavery politicians like John C. Calhoun, who you may be familiar with, he was um, at the time a South Carolina senator, he used census results to try to show that slavery is the, quote, natural condition of Black people. And so he pointed to this high number of Three Black people identified as, quote, insane and idiots in the 1840 census, and the low number of enslaved Black people identified in this census in this category. And then they used this data to justify why Texas should be a slave state at, when it entered the Union. Okay, so again, a question on the census can lead to extreme devastating results that are very harmful, that perpetuate white supremacy. And just keep in mind that this belief, a belief that um, white people were biologically superior to Black people and that Black people were um, biologically destined for slavery was part of the mainstream scientific belief system of the period. And so the census, um, science, culture, um, all of these kinds of systems are operating um, to uphold white supremacy. All right, so that's 1840. Then we're gonna move to after the Civil War, 1870. So I want to, again, encourage you to think about the language that is given to census workers. All right, so rather than look at the results, we're gonna look at the language, the directions given to census workers for when they're filling out this category that in, um, in this year is called color. This is a quote and I want to acknowledge this language is derogatory. So here's the quote. These are, this is the exact language of the directions. Quote, be particularly careful in reporting the class mulatto the word here is generic and includes quadroons, octoroons, and all persons having any perceptible trace of African blood. Important scientific results depend upon the correct determination of this class, end quote. So there's a lot to unpack in this language. So there's a lot of pressure on these census workers to make what um, they are trained to think is a right decision and not a wrong decision about how they're categorizing people. They're being told that um, there are important scientific results, again, as if race is biological. And this is focusing on um, what was called, considered the one drop rule, any perceptible trace of African blood. Okay, so again, we're after the Civil War. Um, there is a fear among oh, the white population of a free black, um, of free black people. We're, again, we're after the Civil War, and this census, the language here is reflecting this tension. And as I mentioned before, this again is consistent with mainstream beliefs about. Um, humans being able to be divided into biological races. Again, a false belief. Okay, we're gonna jump to moment number three. 
and were in 1930 and 1940. 1930, the racial category Mexican is added to the census, and it is the only year this category appears on the census, not 1920, not 1940. And again, let's look at the language that is given to the census workers. Quote, practically all Mexican laborers are of a racial mixture difficult to classify, end quote. So that just perpetuates this um, you know, negative stereotype about people who are um, hard to identify as if like they're trying to be sneaky. And um, legal scholar Ian Haney Lopez, who if you haven't run across his work, he's really um, doing uh, exceptional work in this area. He explains that the census category that was added in 1930 of Mexican quote, helped legitimize federal and state expulsion campaigns, end quote, in the 1930s. So thousands and thousands of Mexican Americans, American citizens of Mexican descent, as well as Mexicans were um, deported. And the, um, as he points out, the data results from the census was used for this, again, this act of um, uh, this act, this deportation. Okay, again, causing great, great harm. Finally, um, in 1940, the category Mexican was removed from the racial category, and we have not seen it under race since then. The directions in 1940 were, quote, Mexicans are to be regarded as white unless definitely of Indian or other non-white race. So when I mentioned race being socially constructed, here is a perfect example. Uh, you know, not white one year, white 10 years later. Okay, so this is reflecting um, some shifting uh, policy decisions here. All right. So the last moment I would like for us to think about is still in 1940, but a slightly different um, direction here. And so this is about how the data was used there. So there was also the racial category of Japanese. And a few years ago, there was a Washington Post um, investigation where they found secret use of census info helped send Japanese Americans to internment camps in World War II. So again, um, another example of how this time we have the census results upholding policies that in turn uphold white supremacy. Okay, I wanna come back to this slide. You saw this slide already. Um, I hope you're starting to see that the census is not just a neutral questionnaire and that there are countless examples, unfortunately, I just showed you a couple, but there's so many more, of a history of the questions and instructions upholding white supremacy, and then the census results also being used to uphold policies of white supremacy. So we could certainly go on and on and on and talk about the history, but I would like for us to jump to the present. And I would like for you to think about how can acknowledging this history help us determine what to do about the census and its race question in the future. So we're gonna look at, well, what is the census doing now? So as I mentioned before, since 1960, people self-identify. You fill out the form, you fill in the bubbles, um, you decide what um, racial category you want to identify with. Or since 2000, people can identify as more than one race. Before 2000, that was not possible and they had to make a choice and that caused um, a lot of um, tension and pressure as you might imagine. And so since 2000, people can check more than, um, more than one race. All right, I want us to take a look at today's census website. So these are screenshots from the census website and the page is called about the topic of race. And if you went to the census website, this is exactly what you would see. And so I'd like for us to look at a few things here. 
So one of the things to keep in mind is the census is very explicit that today's census is using the 1997 Office of Management and Budget Standards on Race and Ethnicity. So one question is, <laughs> that was a while ago, why are we using 1997 um, definitions? So I think that's a question that is worth um, pursuing. Um, something else to keep in mind is these are the five current um, categories that are considered um, the races that are listed in the census, white, black or African-American, American Indian or Alaska Native, Asian, Native Hawaiian, or other Pacific Islander. Okay, so they're very explicit. These are the five categories and they define them here. Um, when I show these to students, they often are surprised about the definition of white, which says a person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. I have students from the Middle East and North Africa who say, I'm not treated like I'm white. I'm not considered to be white, but yet according to the census, that is the, the box that I need to check. Um, so again, a lot, a lot of questions here. Okay. So we're going to keep going and keep looking at this same page. All right. If, um, if we're on the census website, it has this question, what is race? And you might recall, again, I showed you earlier historical examples where they focus on race being scientific. So now we have the opposite. The, it says the racial categories included in the census reflect a social definition of race recognized in this country and not an attempt to define race biologically, anthropologically, or genetically. Okay, so they don't acknowledge that they used to do something very different, but they are clear that they're saying race is a social construct. They're also saying, and you may have noticed this in the five categories, those five racial categories did not refer to anyone who would identify as Hispanic, Latino, Latina, Latinx. Um, and so here the language is clear. People who identify their origin as Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish may be of any race. Okay, and we're going to get to that more in a moment. Finally, the census website, again, if you are interested in actually looking at it, I have the URL right here. Um, the census website on race um, specifically says why they are collecting information about race. And they say that it is for civil rights. They say it's about redistricting principles. They also say that race data is used to promote equal employment opportunities and to assess racial disparities. So they're not explicitly saying that um, the census used to be used for very, very different purposes that upheld white supremacy. And now they're being used in an attempt to do the opposite, uphold civil rights. So they're not really acknowledging the past, but they are saying they're trying to focus on civil rights. Okay, so we're gonna look at two questions. Question number eight, and question number nine. So if you filled out the census in 2020, and if you were living in the US in 2020, you probably filled it out. This was question number eight. And essentially this is asking, do you or do you not identify as Hispanic, Latino, or of Spanish origin? And they're using the word origin here. They're not using the word ethnicity. And they're certainly not using the word race because again, they say um, Hispanic origins are not races. And so this is essentially a yes or a no question. Um, yes, you are of Hispanic, Latino or Spanish origin or no, you are not. All right, and if you are, you can be more specific. All right, so that's question eight. And then right after it is question nine. What is your race? And we have the five racial categories that we just saw. All right, so white, black or African-American, American Indian or Alaska Native, 
And then if you go down a little bit further, the left hand and the middle column are Asian categories. And then the right column is Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander categories. So those are the five official categories that the most recent census that you just filled out is using. The change that they did make is that if you're white, they um, gave you those that space to add um, an origin. So they're also not using the word ethnicity there, which is interesting. Um, and there are a lot of questions about, well, what, you know, what if I'm several, you know, if I come from five different countries, what am I supposed to do? Um, so anyway, these are not really answered questions, but um, I think they're interesting. Uh, and so um, people who identify as Black or African American could also have the option of writing in a more specific um, uh, identity there and so on. And then if you look at the very bottom, you'll see it says some other race. And so what ends up happening because people who identify as Latino, Latina, Hispanic, Latinx um, often don't also want to identify with one of these five races, they will check the box that says some other right race and then hand write either Latino, Hispanic, um, or the identity that they um, identify with. And so in um, recent, in, in the 2010 census especially, the number of people doing that and not answering the um, any of the five categories was really, really significant. And so this is a persistent um, challenge. So people that feel like the census um, answers are not really suiting their needs are kind of resisting um, the way the questions are being asked and kind of reimagining it in their own way by checking that um, some other race. Okay, so the last piece that I would like for us to think about is how are census results reported and interpreted and what impact does that have? So I'm drawing from some headlines from the New York Times, the Washington Post, um, and these early headlines were a result of um, the release of the 2000 census results. So I want you to listen for this, the language and what, what do you hear going on in this, the language of these headlines? New census shows Hispanics are even with blacks in US. Hispanics draw even with blacks in new census. Hispanics now largest minority census shows. Hispanic population is rising swiftly, Census Bureau says. Hispanic growth surge fueled by births in U.S. So again, these are mainstream, large newspaper headlines, all before um, people were really, you know, pre-cell phone, before, well, pre-smartphone, um, newspapers, printed newspapers had a, a major impact. And so really like thinking about this language, um, the first couple of headlines really focus on a sense of as if there's like this competition between um, the, the group they're identifying as Hispanic and the group they're identifying as Black. All right, who's winning this race? And then we have the winner, Hispanics, now largest minority, again, as if it is a competition. And then we also just have this um, language that we associate with fear rising swiftly, a surge. Um, and I want you to just keep, keep that in mind. And then finally, um, moving to uh, two other um, ways in which census results have been reported. In 2008, there was sort of a major announcement and the New York Times used this language, minorities in US set to become majority by 2042. And so this is the idea that white people will become a statistical minority in the future, 2042, 2045, the year keeps shifting. But this is um, something that the media really uh, 
publicized a lot and got, and this got a lot of attention. And then most recently, after the 2020 census results were released in 2021, the Washington Post initially had one headline and got a lot of criticism for it and then revised it within a couple of hours to, to change the language. So first they said, census data shows the number of white people in the US fell for first time since 1790. So as you know, the 1790 was the first census ever. And so this first headline definitely makes it sound like this is a problem, right? That this is something we should be scared of. They adjusted it to census data shows widening diversity, number of white people falls for first time. So maybe they improved it a little bit, but still this focus on um, white people becoming a statistical minority is something that is um, is really emphasized. And, you know, you might think that's not that big of a deal, but unfortunately, this has had extremely um, horrific consequences. So Kathleen Ballou is a scholar who studies white supremacy. And she has been um, researching this topic and she talks about how white supremacists react to those kinds of census results um, with what she calls a feeling of apocalyptic threat. And they, per they interpret those census results as the annihilation of the white race. Likewise, Tucker Carlson, a very, very, very popular um, media personality on Fox News talked about the the um, results of the 2020 census when they were announced in, in 2021. And he described what he was seeing on CNN. Um, he was talking about how the CNN commentators of color, um, and in his language, he says they were, quote, cheering the extinction of white people, end quote. Robert Pape is a political scientist. And after the January 6th insurrection, he studied the demographics of um, people that were arrested or charged with um, something related to the January 6th attack on the Capitol. And he found, quote, counties with the most significant declines in the non-Hispanic white population are the most likely to produce insurrectionists who now face charges, end quote. So for me to connect these dots, it really seems like um, white people uh, are being urged to feel a sense of fear from um, becoming a statistical minority. And many of them are acting on this fear. And I'm going to end with, um, with um, this uh, sort of the, the direction that this unfortunately seems to be taking. So recent mass shootings in Buffalo, El Paso, Pittsburgh, and more by white domestic terrorists um, who believe that a Jewish cabal is organizing what's called a great replacement or a quote, white genocide. And so they're leaving behind manifestos that are very explicit about all of this conspiracy thinking. And their manifestos talk about wanting to provoke a civil war that will lead to the creation of a white ethno state. And these manifestos are often citing the census data with a real sense of um, incredible fear and foreboding that it would be, again, an apocalypse if white people um, were becoming that statistical minority. And I'll just mention, you may have, you know, since we're in New Jersey, you may have seen the news yesterday and Thursday that there was um, a significant threat against synagogues in New Jersey. And they did, FBI did luckily catch the person who seemed to be posing a threat. We don't really know details. Um, but that he was um, harboring extremist anti-Semitic views. And these are all very much um, connected together. So I would like to ask you some questions. 
and um, maybe we can open this up for some discussion. So the big question is, well, what's next? What do we do? So the Census Bureau explicitly acknowledges that race is a social construct and not biological. And they want to, they say they want to use that data to advance civil rights. Okay, so that seems potentially good. However, the Census Bureau is using five racial categories developed in the late 1700s, which became the very foundation of a false and dangerous myth that race is biological and hierarchical. So if the, if the racial categories and the, and the questions on the census were originally intended to support white supremacy in the past, what does it mean that the Census Bureau continues to use those categories today, claiming the purpose is now advancing civil rights? And what should the census look like in the future? So I know I've I've gone through a lot of different ideas here. Um, I really am eager to hear what your thoughts are, what your questions are. Um, you certainly are more than welcome to reach out to me. I will be sharing these slides um, with the organizers and you can ask them um, to uh, get those slides sent to you. So I'm going to stop sharing here.